<laughs> Can I ask you a personal question? No, no, you cannot. What's your vulva all about? <laughs> <laughs> That's personal. That's a personal. <laughs> Jesus. That's a really personal question. That is a really personal question. That I wasn't expecting. I thought you were about to like ask me my mom's like maiden name or something. <laughs> no, I went further. Why well, start with my vulva? Can we work back? I'd be great on The Bachelor. <laughs> You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts, Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. Hello and welcome to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. I'm Kane Holloway. I'm Greg Barrett. Oh, and I'm DPF. Have- Producer, what? Let's start again. Why do we have to? You have to hold your hand, Pat. Come on, God damn! (laughs) I've never introduced on the show. You introduce all the time. Okay, (laughs) let's start over. Welcome to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. I'm Kane Holloway. I'm Greg Barron. I'm producer Pat. There you go. Little pause is fine. Mm, Fucking crushing it. Okay, I just want to say, I've been watching Perfect Match. Uh, the Netflix uh, mixed bag, the 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 trail mix of dating shows, where it's every Netflix dating show pushed into a bag, and and they now it's their own thing, and they have to find their perfect match. And my least favorite person on the planet is on the show. He's na- his name is Shane. Uh, he's from Love Love Is Blind season two, and I'm not gonna lie, I. He, that guy, shouldn't be on this show. <laughs> he should not be on this show at all. Uh, I fear every time he matches with somebody that it's go- about to go horribly wrong. The fact that it hasn't is kind of crazy, and they did a kissing challenge, and his kiss was good, shocked me. It shocked the shit out of me. Here's the thing. First off, the kissing challenge, they've stolen all of their game ideas from Love Island. Oh. What? But on Love Island, everybody just kisses and then they rate them by number and then somebody wins. And it's done very quickly. This one, they go through all the kisses. Oh, my God. It took forever. It's great. I actually loved it. I thought it was really smart. The show is chaos. (laughs) Yes. There's (laughs) nobody is going to find love. (laughs) Nobody really even wants to find love. No, no, no. People came to fight. Yes. (laughs) And it's, and it's not just dating shows. Mm-hmm. There's a guy that's coming on from The Mole, which was very good. The Mole, yeah. the one that won The Mole, who's kind of a cool guy. Uh, it's from The Circle. Mm-hmm. It's from uh, 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 th- Then Too Hot to Handle, of course. Love uh, there's a that. girl there that's like the, been the focus of the show pretty much, the blonde girl. And yep. she's from uh, the, the one where they dress like animals. Sexy beasts. Beast. Yep. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah, I love it's, it. it's awesome. I also like that Nick, it's just Nick Lachey. It's not Nick and Vanessa Lachey. I don't know what Vanessa's doing or what's going on in their marriage. But yeah. somehow, for some reason, she's not on this fucking show. And here's the thing about Nick Lachey. He's not afraid to look a little boozy. No, not at all. <laughs> he's got a plump, he's got a plump face. That's Boy, red. yep. And then look, I think he likes a scotch. He does. That boy looks, yeah, he looks like a, a a white loaf of bread for sure. I think the day he got to stop being ripped to be in a boy band was his favorite day. <laughs> I'm pulling my shirt out. I'm yep. wearing it untucked. Hell yeah. I'm drinking scotch. <laughs> I'm eating mac and cheese, candy, boozing. Oh, man, I'm living my best frat boy life. If I don't have to work out or sing, god damn it. And he, and he doesn't have to write anything. I don't know how much hands-on shit he has, but 
it, that I mean, he's just on the show and he's um, not a great host. I don't think he's ever been a good host. He's very uh, slow. Uh, he's not dynamic at all. He's not like Seacrest. Uh, he's like he's a little he's like a slower Carson Daly. He speaks slower and he's just like not appealing when he's on. It's just like the fact that it's Nick Lachey, which also. I mean, who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, somebody, they convinced somebody that he was still relevant. <laughs> it's given him three shows. I, I know. Vanessa have a nice little thing going on. Yeah. Three dating franchise, all which appear to be successful. Yes. Very successful. And somehow yeah. are the face of, but also they're not because if, if you took them out completely, I I would forget they were ever hosting the show. Yes. You don't need them. And you don't need Nick for this. This thing this this thing is is crazy. But I I can't stop focusing on Shane. I've never seen a guy who doesn't belong on TV who's so crazy that he I mean he like he could, he should be on TV because he's insane to look at. He's oh, got yeah. big giant eyes. He's like if a dog dog's birthday wish was to be a person, but doesn't <laughs> like know what it's like to be a human being. The French girl broke him down like almost perfectly. She was like, he's got a childlike wonder about him. Me and him, I believe, are the same age, and he acts like he's twelve. And I can't, I can't. He. Shouldn't be on the moment this the French girl goes to talk to another guy. He's immediately on top of her trying to get her uh, to say something good about him. So they match. And it's uh, upsetting to watch. He's got to work some shit out and he shouldn't be on reality TV. No, he absolutely should. <laughs> he's chaos. He's, he's, chaos. he's perfect. Huge egos, huge yeah. insecurities, all of it. Mm -hmm. The guy from the circle who was really ripped when he was on there, Joey, mm -hmm. who's now like a cast off from, from Jersey Shore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks like a butter sculpture that's like becoming room temperature. It's just. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no. It's just like kind of falling. He looks like he's always almost falling. <laughs> Compared to everybody else, he's pretty ripped. Yeah. Except for the guy that came in a suit and never took it off. <laughs> no. And the guy was, in the vest. It was a three-piece. He looked like a carnival barker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He went um, quickly. He went quickly. Yeah, he went quickly. And, and, and Zay... From the ultimatum, out. Zay wasn't a good, Zay wasn't a good dude. I'm glad he's gone. Yeah, Zay wasn't good in the on the ultimatum as a person. No, and he was terrible on this show. It was I think it was because he's tall, he's muscular, he's good looking. He he may have like been one of those ego villain guys, but he's just like he's just a bad guy in general. Like he's not a TV villain to root against. He feels like he has so many uh, issues to work out. He's like so hurt that he wasn't the top pick. But it's not like a it's not like a cartoonish reality star where it's like, how am I not the top? Like Joey's a cartoon. Joey's a fucking. How am I not the top pick? He was more like viscerally upset, and it looked like it could have turned into a knife fight if. It went that way because he he's just violent and it, you could see it in his face. And he, he's another guy shouldn't be on TV, shouldn't be on a show like this. The fact that he was on the ultimatum. Yeah, I get that. But this show, it's it's like a playground. It's, well, it's he's, not, gone. he's gone and he's gone now. And I couldn't have been happier. Yeah. yeah it's a it's a it's a fun show. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I can't wait for more. I'm on uh, I'm on episode three, and I'm very excited for more. Um, we have a question. DTBFFpodcast at gmail.com. We have one from Geekiana. She's, uh, she wants to know what's going on with dating, Greg. 
She goes, Dear Greg, Kane, and Pat, please help. I don't know what I'm doing. It's been a long time since I wrote in, so here's me again. I got married really young and was married for 20 years. I did theater when I was in high school and college, and I would get to know someone during rehearsals and then start dating him after the show went up. I only had long relationships, no casual dating. Now that I've been through a difficult divorce and gone through all the mess of finding out he was cheating on me for most of our marriage, I feel like I'm finally in a place to start thinking about new relationships. I've been alone and rebuilding my life for six years. I've found a local group through Facebook for single geeks, and I've been trying to get brave and post there more often. I finally put up a selfie the other day, even though I'm not confident about my appearance. Surprisingly, a guy commented on my picture and we started messaging back and forth. This is where I start to panic. What the fuck do men want when they want to message you, but they don't have anything to say? <laughs> 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 that's, that's what they want. They just want to message you. And, if, and for more information about that, watch The Current Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, nothing to say. That guy also had nothing to say when he was a contestant. No. Why is he the bachelor? That dude's a six. I don't get it. I I don't really get it either. And he's a he's a Republican. Yeah, he, isn't his name? He got, his, he got his dad to get into cryptocurrency, and his dad lost his savings. <laughs> Who wants to marry that guy? Who would oh. fight over that guy? I mean, he is. He does seem kind. Does he? I'll give him that. Aw. But you know what? So does Pat. Pat's nice and seems nice. I'd love to see. I'd love to see Pat on The Bachelor. Would be great. <laughs> You've never I'd seen. Love you for Pat to be The Bachelor. I'd love for America to wake up to that. <laughs> Dude, and to have like thirty women all scream his name at once on a balcony. Yeah. <laughs> We're here for, I'm here for Pat, they would say. <laughs> Pat, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I have a dog. I, uh, I have a metal band, uh, motorcycle. <laughs> also, I'll eat spaghetti off of your belly and back. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. These women would be frothing at the mouth for <laughs> for that we messaged for what seemed like fucking hours and i covered shit like hobbies favorite foods and tv shows yawn i don't know those are kind of some of my favorite things to talk about i like to talk about my favorite tv shows i love talking about we i'm re-watching succession i oh, yeah. all i want to do is talk about it yeah. i love succession uh, uh greg show right before the show greg showed me his sandwich <laughs> Dikiana, what more do you want? That's we have the 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 most flourishing relationship I have in my life to this day is me and Greg Barrett, and those are the two things we talk about: is fucking food. We had a whole candy cast two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, Dikiana, yeah. what do you want? <laughs> um, at one point he said he didn't want to get too personal right away, and I said, great. I'm not ready for that. And then like an hour later, he wanted to know when we he could ask me personal questions. Uh, he texted me first thing the next morning and I was like, hey, I'm super busy. It's fucking Monday morning. So he left me alone for a whole hour before wanting to know when I would feel comfortable with the personal questions. It was, Tom Brokaw, why does he want to? <laughs> what's the fucking, well, Why? So I had to say again, I'm really, really busy with work and I have three job interviews. So things are busy for the next two days. He texted me again tonight and again asked me to ask him questions. I'm like, dude, I don't know what else to ask at this point. Uh, I feel like I'm a disappointment somehow. Does he just want me to start sexting him? Ain't gonna happen. I told him right away that I am not used to dating and would be moving really slow. I said, it's totally fine if that's not okay with him. I'm fucking 48. I've uh, got no time to be something I'm not. I'm not a fuck, eat, fuck, sleep kind of person. I'm demisexual. I only develop attraction through building trust. 
I'd love to get to know someone and see if there is a mutual attraction, but hours long small talk on Messenger is not going to do it. He started off talking about going out soon, but I feel like I'm failing at this messaging test. The only other guy I've met through this group, it went pretty much the same way. Hours and hours of small talk. Hey, text with nothing to say. Is this what dating is now? What am I doing wrong? Maybe I just can't do this. Maybe I should just stay cuddled up with my dog. I'm frustrated. I feel like there's this language that everyone else speaks that I can't understand. I'd like to be in a relationship or casually date or whatever, but only if I can be myself. I bet there are not many men out there that want to take things slow, but I'm not going to force myself to be something I'm not. That's what my marriage turned into, and I won't go back again. What do you think? Am I just too weird to be in the dating pool? Gigiana. Wow. Yeah. It's hard to say, you know, obviously when he, when he was talking about getting personal, he was wanting to get risky. Mm -hmm. You know, something. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Uh, and I get not wanting to get risky. Um, but people, that's what people do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is what people do, it seems like. I, mean, I don't know, because I haven't done any of this online messaging, dating kind of thing. Well, dating is a str when you, I know when you get out of something that you've been in for a long time, you haven't had to worry about dating and then all of a sudden you're thrust into it and you're deciding to make the choice to date, uh, you get nervous because you've been out of the culture for so long. Now you're re-entering a world that seems incredibly foreign. How do you flirt? How do you, do you play a game? What do you do? How do you talk? What's the appropriate amount of communication and all this fucking horseshit so i get your frustration with not knowing how things are supposed to go i went through that uh the thing that and this is all based on your comfortability but i think the best move is is to move it out of messenger by either a phone call or video or in-person dating and then just kind of keep doing that until you connect with somebody and then and then explain this thing with them through those types of media, mediums because if you don't like texting because i don't i had to get used to texting i didn't like texting a lot and uh, i had to get used to that form of communication because that's how people do it but i like talking on the phone not to everybody but i like talking on the phone to people i like talking on the phone to and uh, especially if I'm trying to get to know somebody romantically, I want to see their face and their expressions. And um, you just keep at it. It's frustrating now, but it won't be frustrating. It won't be as frustrating. It won't be this new kind of frustration where you're you're trying to. It feels like you need to be sprinting when you haven't stretched and you haven't ran in years. So just have a little, uh, give yourself a lot of leeway in this department and then just try with the next guy or try, try, don't just whatever, move on from this guy, drop him in a bucket. Don't answer his shit anymore. The next guy go, you know, message a few times, the little pleasantries don't, you don't have to do it for hours. And then the next, the, then just go, Hey, you want to jump on a video chat and meet in person, have like a video date? And uh, see how you feel from there. And then if yeah. an in-person date feels comfortable, then jump into that. And then you'll start to get into a rhythm until you meet somebody that excites you. And also, you, you, you do have to remember that the other person is also nervous, also yeah. doesn't know what to do, also doesn't know what the rules are. You know? Yeah. Don't let them lead just because they went first. You know? Yeah. They they could be trying too. That's the best that they know how to ask you about TV shows and yeah, you know, finding that common ground takes a while, but it's much easier to do in person. 
yeah, you're not going to hit the personal things. The fact, yeah, the fact that the guy was like, when can we start talking about personal stuff? It's like, like I noticed even in my coaching, like I was doing it on the phone a lot. And then I switched to zoom and zoom is so much more effective. Yeah. It's it just so much more effective. It's so much better to see somebody's face and to talk to them and mm -hmm. see what they're thinking. And, you know, it just, it just is another layer yeah that doesn't come across even just on the phone yeah and then you'll you'll you can get sort of an attraction from somebody through that and then if that feels good when you do if you like feel good on your first facetime or zoom and then the next zoom date you have you're excited about it i would make the jump to in person you know and uh and then go from there and then take it as slow as you want. And then also tell them that like, Hey, I, as, as personal person, all personal stuff comes with the art of conversation, you know, like you, you reveal what you want to reveal when you feel comfortable revealing it. So, you know, if you don't want to reveal anything, you instinctively won't. And then you'll be in a conversation with someone who you didn't know made you feel comfortable enough that all of a sudden you're sharing shit and you'll find yourself going, wow, I haven't told anybody that. Yeah. And then, then bang. Now you there, you're having a personal conversation, but to be like, Hey, can I ask you personal questions? No officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you personal questions? <laughs> Can I ask you personal questions? No, no, you cannot. What's your vulva all about? <laughs> <laughs> That's personal. That's so personal. <laughs> Jesus. That's a really personal question. That is a really personal question. That I wasn't expecting. I thought you were about to like ask me my mom's like maiden name or something. No, I went further. Why well, start with my vulva? Can we work back? I'd be great on The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> What's your vulva all about? <laughs> on the you one, know, I would I would ask things on the first day, like, do you watch Succession? Because if not, we can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite character? Because I think I'm going your way, and I'm Team Cousin Greg. All day. I think my whole family's cousin Greg, but I'm Team Tom. Oh my God, dude. I love Tom so much. I've always loved Tom. He's so great. It's so funny to rewatch their relationship. Oh, Tom, for, I, hate, I couldn't have hated a character more than Tom. And now I couldn't feel more sorry for Tom. Yeah. And, I, and I'm in, we're at the, like, the end of the second season where Tom is really getting the shit into the stick. And he's got one of my favorite quotes. I shared it on the show before. <clears throat> I'll share it again here. And this, this is like attributes to anybody that may feel this way in a relationship. These words are like really impactful where he goes, uh, I wonder if the sad I would have not being with you would be better than the sad I get from being with you. The best. It's so good. It's such a nice little piece of poetry. It's really real. Yeah. It's really smart. And I think it's a really smart way to look at relationships. Mm hmm Because I know I'd be sad without you, but I'm also really sad right now. Yes. It's like, yeah, you, you wonder about the your different levels of loneliness. Okay, I'm lo I'm I would I know I would be lonely without you, but I feel very lonely in this. Like I you're in the room with me and I feel like I'm alone. And it's a yeah. terrible type of alone feeling because it's like yeah. i have to pretend every time uh dude when she cock blocks him he's like talking to a personality this like girl and she's like a radio or like a tv personality and shiv comes in and cock blocks him you're like fuck you shiv dude leave him alone and let him fuck who he wants to fuck this was your idea yeah, <laughs> it's fucking yeah it's shiv, man all right we'll be right back This is the theme song for what does this mean song?
theme song for what does this mean song? We'll read a self help quote, and they're definitely not memes. Memes are something completely different than quotes. Quotes are supposed to help you through all the bullshit in your life, and memes are like uh, that poster of that cat hanging from a tree, and it says, Hang in there, baby, or Mondays, am I right? Mondays, am I right? So if you can think of a different title, then we'll probably change it. What does this meme? I feel inspired. You do? Yeah. Why do you feel inspired? I just, you know, I've had a lot of coffee. I got some good sleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I found out my dog. I went to go. Uh, I got a puppy. And uh, they told us that she she was tiny. She's so little. And they told us that she was a um, a dachshund lab mix. Uh, and they said, we think she's a dachshund lab mix. So we thought we were going to get like a, a long, big dog, like a short but wide wiener lab dog. And then everyone kept like you look at her features and she's a Rottweiler. And like she's got Rottweiler features. She's a Rot, 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 Rottweiler lab mix. And she's going to now she's going to be fucking huge. She's got we thought we were getting this little fucker. And now she's huge and she's already a lot. But she's now getting into this um, this sleep pad. I was exhausted. Having a puppy is fucking exhausting. And I've been tired for three weeks straight. And you, you you even look at her and you go, I think I regret doing the, making this decision. But now she's like cuddling up on my neck and sleeping. And now I got like, I got a second best friend to come kick it with me and do all kinds of fun shit outside. We, we, I bell trained her to go because she's been pissing and shitting in the house. It's just making me want to kill myself. But now she's fucking using the bell and running outside and shitting. And I've never, I've never been so excited to watch somebody shit before. It's just so wonderful and now i'm in such a like great mood you know and so yeah. part of i got caffeine my dog is dope and i got some good sleep so i'm i'm inspired i like it okay like good it. miranda sent one to uh, a inspirational meme inspirational quote to our uh instagram dtbff podcast on instagram she says a good place to put inspirational quotes is up your ass <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Start to show off with a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think it's good. I love it. Uh, my sister sent one to DTBFF podcast trying to make up for the uh, episode that she came in with her list. Really embarrassed the shit out of me. <laughs> She's trying to make up for that. She says, all failure is failure to adapt. All success is successful adaptation. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> We could have recorded another episode in that pause. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta keep the pause in, Pat. You have. <laughs> I want people to be like, "Is my Wi-Fi out?" <laughs> <laughs> Let Summer sit in that fucking adaptation. Oh God, that was great. Kristen Kortner sent one that says, you've done enough watering. It's time to be the garden for once. Hmm. And get water? <laughs> I'm going to get a t-shirt that says get watered. <laughs> <laughs> you confuse a lot of people. Get water. <laughs> you got to get watered. You can't be watering everybody. Yeah, you got to get watered yourself. Get watered. You got to get watered. Always be watered. You got to get watered. Smokey Creepin sent one of... Uh, he loves sending us these. this guy in the chair. 
We sent two. One says, send a happy birthday text to your ex on the wrong day because peace was never an option. Stay toxic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Oh, fuck it. Smokey. And he sent another one says, don't ask me if I'm free on the 14th. I'll be walking into restaurants saying, oh, that's why you aren't responding to all the happy couples. Stay toxic. I don't get that one, but I don't get it. He's going to do it to all the couples? He's going to say that's why you weren't responding? To all the, like. Was there on dates? Like as a proclamation to the room, or are you going to go to each individual table? I mean, and that was going to be on Valentine's Day? Apparently. Well, uh, keep sending men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a ground ball. Real good. Okay. Over on our Discord... GTBFF podcast on our Discord. What does this mean? Uh, Laura Rue said, there's a part of me that is hesitant to put this up because, man, you guys can get brutal with the submissions. But this one kind of resonated with me. Sometimes you just have to be done. Not mad, not upset, just done. That was good, Rue. It is. Always be blocking. That's our motto. Always be blocked. Sometimes you just got to be done. Mm-hmm. Bjorn is awesome. Sent one that says, when you fall off that horse, you get right back up and you eat that horse. <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> I do too. I like that a lot. I do. <laughs> why is why is it near with a picture of Goku from Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I don't get that part. But I do like the eat that horse. Denonymous. That one that says it's hard to be a diamond in a rhinestone world. Dolly Parton. Huh. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well bleak, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> Sasa says, before you criticize someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That way you'll be a mile from them and you'll have their shoes. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> Dude, our listeners are funny. That's great. <laughs> Laura Rue sent one that it's a picture. It's a picture of a unicorn and it says, Giddy up, sparkle farts. There's chaos to spread. All right. <laughs> sparkle farts. <laughs> Nix has one that says, whatever you think you can't do, just know that there is someone who is confidently doing it wrong right now. They have no plans at doing it better either, and people are paying them to do it. Please believe in your own excellence as much as they believe in their mediocrity. I feel like uh, this is about us. I mean, it could be. I feel like I feel like we're the we believe in our own mediocrity. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That's how I got this far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Alan Brand sent one that says, I love when a meme is unsure of its own effectiveness. Just because someone's mad at you doesn't mean they're right. I hope that hits. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know, right? Yeah, somebody can absolutely be mad at you for the right reasons. For the absolute right reasons. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't just immediately dismiss them because they're angry. Well, you might have fucked up. You might have done something wrong. Yeah. But I do like how I hope that one hits. This is for people who like to gaslight. This that's yeah. what this is for. This is for people who are like, that's not how it went. <laughs> totally. Uh, 
inspired by the Reddit remix about the boyfriend who owned a sex doll, Denonymous sent one that says, everything is a sex toy if you're brave enough. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's great. We should end the segment with that. That's good. That's good. I was gonna read I was gonna read one, but I think I'll save it for next week. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Segment three, I think we've had good energy this whole, I think we've had segment three energy this entire episode. Yeah, we have had, it's been a segment three kind of show. It's a segment three kind of show, my friend. <laughs> so jacked up and ready to rock and roll. Mm. You know, Greg, as Pat said earlier, off the show, <laughs> so I have to reiterate, <laughs> we fuck around a lot on this show. There's a lot of, there's a lot of just messing around, you know? Yeah. But we do give advice and sometimes our advice helps. And, uh, we have some, um, we have some emails in about that very thing. Oh, cool. Jillian has an update. I truly wanted to thank you for the advice. So much has changed. I'm ecstatic. Still doing my hair, makeup, going to the gym, all the things I couldn't do when I was with Satan without being accused of cheating. Joined a women's Jeep club, which gained me a ton of new friends and had distracted me from missing the live music scene I was avoiding due to Satan and Minions and all the friends he turned. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, however, I took your advice. You know Let's give a real, little recap to the audience so that they can get in on like, yeah. what's that and they haven't listened to the episode. Yeah, uh, initially Jillian had written in about an ex who, once they broke up, was spreading a ton of shitty rumors and talking mad shit to her friends. And they had a lot of the same friends and went to the, they have, they live in a small town and they go to a lot of uh, the same live music events. And she was writing in about how to feel more confident going into these situations or if she should just not go at all and we told her to not oh and also if how she should respond and how she should defend herself uh to all of these rumors and we basically said don't defend yourself in fact whatever people ha try to say about you to your face or get you to try to defend there's no need to defend yourself you might as well just just say whatever that's his opinion that's what happened blah 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 go in head held high don't let that guy, don't let that guy mug you off and keep you from doing and living your life. And um, so apparently it's working. She says, I took your advice and had gotten up the nerve to go by myself to a multi-band show. One of my close male friends was playing and one of his friends was playing. I got up the nerve to go. And of course he was there with another new girlfriend. Oh yeah. And this guy like cycles through a ton of new girls. Like, and then obviously taught, are you dating my dad? <laughs> <laughs> my dad loves to cycle through girlfriends and then talk mad shit. Uh, you'd be proud. I refuse to let him intimidate me. Despite him turning around and glaring, saying something to his girlfriend who also kept glaring at, at, at one point found the need to go around a bunch of tables to walk behind me and accidentally bump my chair as I was taking a drink. I sat very calmly, ignoring him to watch my friend play, only leaving when he was finished with his set. It empowered me to not take bullshit from that fucker. The new lies are occasionally popping up, but have slowed down immensely. My confidence is through the roof. The Jeep girls, well, found out a lot of them are into live music, and now when I'm walking into a show, it's with anywhere from 8 to 15 ladies. Oh, I've wow. only, that's great. I don't have 15 friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you barely have two, and they're in the Zoom with you. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I found out a lot of them are... Oh, no, wait. I've only run into him once since then, still glaring, but I think he figured out I'm not intimidated anymore. 
and I feel like my old self pre Satan is back. I really appreciate the advice you guys gave on the show. It took me quite a while to implement some of it, but I did, and I'm feeling great. Love you guys, Jill. We love you, Jill. Yeah, we're absolutely proud of you and over the moon that we helped in some way and that you're out there doing it. And that's the whole point is like, yeah, don't take bullshit from fuckers is, is an activity. You have to actively not take bullshit from fuckers and uh, you're doing it. And that is wonderful to see. And we have another one from Arturo. Uh, Arturo, Arturo was having an issue living with his girlfriend, trying to buy a house and trying to get his daughter back. And he um, didn't like his living situation, ended up moving into, a, I think it was a garage, his friend's gar like auto garage to save money so that he can eventually buy his house. And Greg gave some advice as a father that you said, make, don't worry about his girlfriend and that um, if it's, if she comes, she comes, but you should make your daughter your North star was your advice. Yeah. And he said, I listened to your advice. In fact, I've been calling my daughter, my North star ever since Greg said it, it stuck. He's right. She is my North star. There was nothing I needed more than to understand that since those last messages, I've quit drinking. I raised my credit score 120 points. Oh my God. I know. He's got 120 credit score now. <laughs> so I got a promotion and a raise, and I lost 15 pounds. My wow. daughter flies. That's amazing. My daughter flies back on March 19th, and I get uh, the keys to our first home on March 1st. And honestly, I just want to thank you guys and this podcast for really helping me see what's important in my life and living and leaving the bullshit behind. Just wanted to send this message and let you know that the podcast works. And I hope everyone that comes across this podcast finds their North Star as well. Well, fuck, man. You're going to make me cry, Arturo. God damn. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. That's really sweet and awesome. Jesus. That's you. I'm happy for your daughter. Yes. Dude, that's great. Congratulations, buddy. That's amazing. It's really good to hear. I'm glad that I hope we I hope we help. Even if you guys don't write in to let us know that we've helped, I hope we're just helping in general, you know. And uh, so that's really cool. That is cool to hear. And if you do want to write in, but you don't want it read on the show, how we've helped. It's also just nice to hear. It keeps us going. Hearing that we help you guys keeps us going. Yeah. Um, on to a Reddit remix? Yeah. Reddit remix. My girlfriend is a size queen, and now I don't know if it's going to work. I've been dating my girlfriend for a little under a year now. We get along really well. However, I realized uh, that she might be a size queen. I am not a particularly well-endowed individual. When we started dating, my girlfriend made a few comments about preferring larger penises but I didn't think too much about it. Tonight we went through her old social media for a laugh. How do you do that? How do you not think too much about it? Like, I know. The first time she mentioned it, it would bum me out. <laughs> yeah. Even if you were well endowed and she was like, I really like a large penis. And then you just like went back to watching TV. <laughs> you'd be like, what's wrong with my dick? <laughs> Exactly. Uh, tonight we went through her old social media for a laugh and I was shocked by how many posts she had made about this subject. In one post from her early teens, she even bragged about the size of her ex-boyfriend's penis. Weirdly, I've met her mom a few times and she also expressed a preference for bigger penises. Is this, this is like... Wait, wait a minute. We'll stop. <laughs> Uh -huh. Her mom yep. also likes big penises, or her mom knows she likes big penises and is just rubbing it in. 
A little bit of both. <laughs> Let me reread that. How, how do you get into a conversation with somebody's mom? Yeah. About the penis size they like. Uh, this feels like a Tom Shiv situation. <laughs> <laughs> She's humiliating him for his his average or small dick size. Uh, I'm going to reread that. Weirdly, I've met her mom a few times, and she also expressed a preference for bigger penises. So it must just be like a thing they talk about, like dinner conversation, you know? Uh, our sex life has been good, and my girlfriend has told me that she is very satisfied. However... I do notice that she prefers the hard and violent sex that you see in porn. I do this for her from time to time, but it takes a lot out of me. So it's, uh, it isn't sustainable and I do it progressively less and less. This is obviously a super sensitive issue because it raises a lot of deep insecurities. I love my girlfriend a lot and think she is a great girl and a great person. Is it worth having a conversation about? If so, how would you go about it? Is this a red flag? I would love to hear your thoughts. That's not as funny as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the guy's so sincere. I know. And self-effacing. Yes. And like, and sort of like kind of acknowledging his own lack while describing her. She's obviously excessive. Mm -hmm. She likes it, you know, she likes big dicks and she likes, mm -hmm. you know, she wants to be ravaged. Yeah. And he gets tired. <laughs> <laughs> Which is too bad. That is too bad. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, have a conversation, I guess. I don't know really what to say. Yeah. I mean, you both have different sexual appetites. Yes. So you might need to find somebody with a compatible sexual appetite. Yeah, yeah. If, um, I mean, she's only gonna, this feels like one of those things where you're either gonna, I, if it was just the dick size thing, I would say you, there's, a, there's a workaround, you know, you can add things to your sex life. But since he doesn't, he also doesn't enjoy the rough sex. Yeah. He, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't enjoy the rough sex that they are having. They are incompatible. So it's two, it's like strike one, two, and three, all kind of wrapped up in one for me. But unless, Unless she's willing to change it up, but sex is a hard thing because if you both aren't turned on by each other's turn-ons, like to be turned on by someone else's turn-ons yeah. will fuel you uh, if her thing doesn't turn you on and you want to like scale down and, she, and she, if she's not going to be turned on by that. Well, also there was no talk of what she does for him. Yeah. And what he needs, what he likes. Right. You know, we're, it's it's like we're in her sex life. Yeah. Trying to figure out her solutions. Yes. As opposed to our sex life where we both enjoy some things or different things or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you were to tell her, that's, a, that's, that, that's one of the cool things about sex in general is like... <clears throat> Somebody you can you'll both have two different ideas of what gets you horny until you like say, hey, this thing like really turns me on. Can you do this? And then all of a sudden you've turned on a new kink in them or a new thing in them that like, oh, shit, he likes when I or she likes when I do this. And so it turns me on to do this for them. So I'm going to and then you could have a you could work around it. But if the rough, violent sex is a thing that turns you off, uh, then you kind of at a impasse. So there's also pills that you could take. They send you a lot of emails, check your spam. Take 
order those. They work. They also work for hair loss, hair loss, penis growth. Two things that I'm really working on right now, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be watching, I'll be watching Hulu and it's my Hulu. And then I'll get, I'll get, uh, ads for hymns, which is for anxiety, depression, hair loss, and erectile dysfunction. And I'm like, Jesus, hymns. What? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Just trying to watch okay. The Bachelor. But the ads for hers are for depression. Yeah. Because, I know. because of all the bald and impotent <laughs> guys out there. Okay, again, what the <laughs> fuck, man? What do you what do you work for him? Stop attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> that company, I was thinking about them the other day. They're genius. Yeah. That's a that's gotta be. I bet that company's doing really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real it's good. just high level specific mm -hmm. problem solving. Oh yeah, breaks it down real fast. If you're a woman and you like struggle with uh, your mind, um, we have these pills that you can take. You can talk talk to a physician, and we'll really help you out with that because it's you know it's hard emotionally for uh, for women. If you're a guy and your dick doesn't work, hey, we got you, bro. <laughs> hey, maybe maybe I want help with my mind. Hims, you ever think of that? <laughs> in the commercial for Hims, in one of them. It shows this really freckly red-haired guy. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Yeah. And you're like, how's he getting laid? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get me some hymns. I got to get some hymns, baby. She's fucking that ginger. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like when you think about how many women George Costanza has been with, you're like, no fucking way. No way. Over nine seasons, like I think over 50 women. You've got to be fucking kidding me. And some really good looking ones, too. Really good looking ones. Marissa Tomei. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, that's the show. Uh, do you guys need hymns or the, the fellas that listen to the show? Uh, do you have a do you have a, the same issue as the Reddit remix guy? Um, do you have any uh, solutions that we didn't think of? You can send them in anonymously if you like. DTBFFpodcast@gmail.com. If you're having relationship problems, if you're taking bullshit from fuckers, you want advice, you want our help, send it out. DTBFFpodcast@gmail.com or on our Instagram, which you should also follow if you don't already. DTBFFpodcast um join the discord discord.com slash dtbff podcast if you'd like to support the show we have several bonus episodes and uh, video versions of this show where it's uh uncut and uh, uh and uncensored and uncensored <laughs> and we do it with our shirts off yeah <laughs> do we you're gonna have to get on the patreon to check it and out find out Pay to find out. You got to find out. <laughs> Patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. Um, my show Going Dutch is this Thursday, February 23rd. If you're in the San Diego area, get tickets. Ticket link is in my bio on at Kane Holloway on Instagram. I'm It's Gregors. I'm at DTBFF producer Pat. You can also call in the show with all of that stuff. What's that phone number, Pat? Oh, that number is 323-379-5544. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Fuck them. Hey there. If you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Patrick Kelly.